You are listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast, a proud member of the Canadian Football Podcast Network. Welcome to the Empire. It's the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Here's Mike Riley, takes the drop, waits and throws, and he's going deep downfield, and Darius Bowman, oh, oh my what? goodness, what a catch by Darius Bowman, you won't see many better than that, Franklin, Kazilstra, touchdown Eskimos, pressure's coming, oh Levi Mitchell goes down, there's a big play for the defense, somersaults for everybody. Welcome back to the Turf District for episode 106 of the Eskimo Empire podcast. My name is Andrew. Thank you again for downloading, subscribing, sharing, and of course, spending some of your time with us. Uh, We are one of many Canadian Football Podcast Network shows. Make sure you check all of those out at CF Pod Network on Twitter. Uh, we have a lot on this show this week as we've got some big asks news, a new history segment, the CFL scoreboard roundup, our pickums for this week, and we are joined by CFLPA executive director and former Eskimo Brian Ramsey. Uh, but first, bringing the history to life as always, it's Super Fan Mike. How are you, man? I'm doing good. It's Excellent. Been, uh, yeah, nice to have the bye week, recharge the batteries a little bit, and. Uh, Get on with the like, last part of the season. Get right back to it, exactly. Oh, and yeah. the whole team is here tonight, is uh, bringing the positivity as always. It is Web Mistress Kayla. How are you? Hey, y'all. <laughs> I love that. That's right. I can hear this. I can hear it. It's so good. Um, speaking of that, um, I think I just want to put out a little bit. Of, I, I don't know. If apology is the right word, but um, you know, our, our regular listeners they they kind of come to expect our honest review of the team, and and we always seem to have fun around it. I know last week uh, the five in a row losses, a last minute guest cancellation, it kind of threw me off a bit. I didn't have the show prepared as usual, uh, but this week we're back to normal, and I'm I'm so glad that you guys are here to uh, chat some more of the CFL. So, did you guys have fun on the bye week? Do anything uh, different? Wow, like I said, just recharge those batteries. Uh, it was nice to sort of just have a, a week to sort of get back and, and enjoying everything about this team and this league that we love so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and on top of that, you did, we didn't have the stress of watching our yes. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good thing. What about you, Kayla? Well, talk about not having the stress. I was in bed probably about 8, 8.30 every single <laughs> night. <laughs> not a bad choice either. No, no. I was like, I don't have to... <sighs> <laughs> now, yeah, Kayla, I, I, I don't want you to be upset when I say this, but Mike, did you take any time playing CFL Frenzy? I sure did. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm still, uh, again, a surprise to absolutely nobody. Uh, so far, I've done nothing but run the ball. Uh, and, no kidding. Uh, yeah, I've won every game. So I've already played. <laughs> I haven't had a single pass play at all this season in there. And Really? Uh, oh, yeah. I'm just kicking butt every worst way. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. I, I The passing did take a little bit of getting used to, but I really I enjoy know. the balance of both. Sure. Um, you wouldn't know. Yes, some <laughs> some of us haven't played at all. I'm sorry. Just saying. It's coming out on Android in two weeks. But um, it was very cool. The CFL asked us to kind of be part of that announcement. And, uh, of course, it was out, and I killed an entire lunch hour the day it came out <laughs> playing it. And uh, it's 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 a real blast. I I, th- yeah. I think it's a ton of fun. So um, I think it's going to appeal to a lot. I mean, the age demographic they said is sort of eight to fourteen, right? And I think a lot of those kids are going to, you know. So it's perfect for me. I was yeah, exactly, say, yeah. Any more Drew Really jokes in there? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if only <laughs> it was really missed the ball on that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was. <laughs> You're welcome. (laughs) So anyway, I'm excited to play more of that for sure. Um, Now, our website is just about ready to launch. Um, Now, a very cool thing. I reached out to uh, Joanny Jutras from uh, the CFL. I guess she is kind of the CFL's photographer at this Mm -hmm. particular moment and uh, asked her if we might be able to get a picture of Commonwealth that we could use for the website and she said that she would be happy to do that and uh, as part of that I I just want to um, 
kind of plug her book. So yes. if, yeah. if you guys don't have it already, uh, make sure you go to joannijutris.com. Uh, you can buy the book there and uh, it is amazing. I, I highly recommend it. And I know she's getting down to the last few copies. Mm-hmm. Uh, so make sure that you uh, jump over there and pick up your copy of that book. Uh, but I, I'm excited about having that. Uh, I, I bet you're excited that it's actually going to launch, Kayla. Oh my gosh. What an inspiration she is. So just to have her a little bit a part of our website, a little tear coming down. That's good. That's yeah. good. I'm so excited. <laughs> a little emotional. That's yeah. all right. This oh. is good. <laughs> now, we do have some big ESC news that we need to talk about this past week. Sure do. Which is uh, super exciting. Um, it is the return of the flow. Mr. Aaron Grimes signs back with the Eskimos. Uh, give us your thoughts on that one. Me, hey? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm pleasantly surprised and pleasantly wrong because everyone was trying to get him back and I heard him speak how he wanted to stay in the NFL and I was like, if anything, it won't be this season. But I was pleasantly surprised and wrong. I'll admit it. But um, holy joy, this is awesome. <laughs> It it's is. like competition of the hair now, though. That's good. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Him I know. and Hoover can go one on one. It's going to be great. and Ruby as well. And Alex, nice sure. Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely. All the got all these. Yeah. Ooh, I tell you, that's a lot of flow going on. <laughs> we need we need some pictures. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, we the whole, get exactly. <laughs> we need the flow bros. We'll we'll work on that. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, absolutely just uh, one of the best things that could happen to this team at this point. Having the bye week as well to have him come in, get acquainted with the playbook, and then start going to a full week of practice. Uh, everybody knows what an incredible talent he was, especially in that defensive backfield where we needed the most. Mm-hmm. We could start seeing with everyone coming back from injury, this become a real nice strong point of the team, and, and it couldn't come at a better time. Absolutely, absolutely, and and I mean, kudos to uh, Sunderland for being able to make the deal happen. Yes, especially because he wasn't part of it when Grimes was here last. Uh, yeah. I mean, he wasn't here, Moss wasn't here, and for Grimes still to want to come back to this community, that's uh, that's says leaps and bounds about the Eskimos in general. But kudos to Sunderland for making that happen. Yeah, the Eskimos absolutely. in the city of Edmonton. I think yeah. he really seemed to fall in love with it. I did see an interview with him when he was with the Eagles. A year ago, I think, mm-hmm. and talking about how um, he really loved this. They talked about his time in the CFL, and he really loved not only the league but the city of Edmonton. And he said he could see himself if things didn't work out. He could see himself going back there, and it's. Uh, I think a lot of us were worried that he might go back to the system he knew better, which would have been Chris Jones. Yes. Um, so the fact that he did choose. The city, the team, and his former players, that is absolutely fantastic. And a guy who can play man-to-man. That's yes. uh, very exciting. For very me. physical player. Yep. And keep with his man. Uh, hey, ooh, well, <laughs> that's very exciting. Um, yeah, no, I think that's a great thing. Uh, now, we, we touched on it a bit last week, um, but I think we need to go into a little more detail. Uh, the CFL announcement, of course, to stop the padded practices immediately yes. and uh, to increase to an extra buy next year. Um, now, what did you guys think of that in general? Well, and I like the uh, extension of an extra week. Um, not just because, A, it's more football, which we talked about before. Yeah, that's all right. But also because it's going to get rid of a lot of those short weeks. Yes. So you're going to see your players at their peak mm-hmm. more than, you know, if you have three games in, in 14 days, 12 days, whatever, and you're starting to see them really tired by the end of it, they're going to be a lot fresher, uh, less mistakes, hopefully less injuries, and you're just getting your team at their best. Well, and less injuries is a huge thing for us this year, right? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And everybody, the league itself. Yeah, yeah. 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 Abs- uh, and we're we're acutely aware. The padded practices was interesting to me, and and I've had a lot of players that have said that that's a good thing. I've heard yes. a couple that have said that maybe it it does leave a little bit, but player safety wise, I think it's fantastic. Yeah, I think the struggle that we're going to have is, well, what are we going to do? We can't tackle in practice, but we can't tackle during the game. So I guess it doesn't really affect we're us. We're consistent. Yeah. That's- <laughs> it's one of the things we do best. Yeah. I, I think that it's going to extend players' careers as well. We have yeah. had this year players get injured during practice, and yes. hopefully that will eliminate a lot of that. Here's here's hoping. Here's yeah. hoping. Well, uh 
<laughs> of course, that decision was made right alongside the CFLPA. And uh, how's that for a segue for bringing in our guest this week? So uh, let's get to our guest. Uh, he is an O lineman that played with the Esks from 2011 to Grey Cup champ in 2015. He's now the executive director for the CFL Players Association. Number 63 in your program, Brian Ramsey. Welcome to the Turf District and thanks for joining us tonight. Thank you very much for having me on this guest. Absolutely. Uh, now, when we have alumni on, we like to go kind of all the way back to start and, and kind of see where your kind of love for the game started. So uh, when when did you actually get introduced to football and when did you start playing? You know, I first started playing when I was in, uh, back home in Victoria, about nine or ten years old. And, and growing up here, we didn't have high school football at the time, but we played community ball and I played with actually a couple players that um, I played against in the CFL years later. Oh, nice. And so my, my first taste uh, of football was uh, community ball here in Victoria around uh, eight or nine, ten years old. Wow. All right. And, and were you automatically playing O-line or were you play- <laughs> did you get to change a few other positions? Well, it's, funny, it's funny. Yeah, that position kind of finds you, I guess. And uh, I was at that time with, with the smaller numbers. I was an uh, offensive and, and defensive lineman even at that time. So I guess I found my niche very early. <laughs> That's very cool. Now, I, I know you and I have discussed that you've, uh, you're have you able to play all five positions on the offensive line. Did you have a particular favorite or one that you were drawn to most? No, you know, I, did, I think they've all been great. I just came into the league as, as an offensive tackle. And, and one of the very first things, and, and I think I was very lucky to have this, have some great veteran leadership on a, on a Toronto team when I first came in. And, and having gone through college and, and only played the tackle position, you know, it was a bit foreign and a bit unnerving going into my first training camp in the CFL thinking that I was going to have to possibly switch positions. But I think, you know, putting some work in to, to get comfortable at, at all those positions earlier on in my career was definitely something that helped me out later. I can remember that first camp in, in Toronto and Tim Prinzen was actually guest coaching and uh, and Tommy had to snap a ball or, or it got me started on, on, on learning how to snap a ball even that first year. Man, that's cool. A man of many talents. <laughs> uh, now, do you remember joining the Eskimos, and what was your first experience here like for you? I do remember joining. I remember uh, it was 2011 and, and coming in, and I remember um, having played at Commonwealth and, and, and been to the city of Edmonton uh, just for uh, away games earlier on in my career and, and getting into a stadium and practicing at Commonwealth and, and just being in awe of the, the tradition and the history uh, within the city and the stadium. Uh, I, I think it's it's something that you can't not notice as soon as you get in there and, and to be a part of it and to put the jersey on is, is definitely something special. Wow, that's that's very cool. Now, of course, in uh, 2015, you got to uh, cap everything off with a with a Grey Cup win. Now, I know you weren't specifically playing in that game, but you were on the field. So, what what was that moment like after the win? No, it takes it takes a bit of time to to soak it in, and 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 looking back and reflecting on it, and you know, to be part of a team that that can you know reach the the pinnacle of the season. It, it, obviously it's just something special and you have a bond with those teammates uh, forever and um, you know getting a chance for, you just realize how many people helped you along the way to get to that point and it was it was really quick and reflecting that it was that I that I found that and um, and I think that was the part that stuck with me is is that you know without sounding cliche it, it really just makes you think about you know your family and and your teammates and 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 your coworkers and and your friends and everyone that sort of helps you get to that point and then being able to share with them that I think that was the most exciting part about it sharing with teammates and family and friends and and that and it's just um, it's one of those things that uh, you can always look back ten fifteen twenty years after and, and and you can talk about it and it was something that we were able to accomplish as a team. That's very cool. I, I was um, lucky enough you brought the Grey Cup to Victoria, and it was just amazing to me to see all the people that loved getting that moment with you with the trophy. Just a really special moment. Yeah, I mean that was that was incredibly special. We had the cup in, in town here for 24 hours in, in uh, January after uh, January 2016, and and I'll tell you what, that was a jam packed 24 hours. <laughs> I um, bet. <laughs> 
start of the day at Bowers here, and the kids were ecstatic to wake up, and, uh, and, and the cup was in the house when they woke up in the morning and to be able to share with the family uh, bright and early that day. We got dressed and headed for school, totally in the cup in hand, and, and got to share it with uh, you know, my daughter and her friends at school. And, and, and like you said, uh, you know, when everywhere uh, we could to share it with everybody and, and going back to sort of describing the cup, that was just an opportunity to, to share it and, and to, to share it. And it was just it's a pretty fun day. Yeah, it was one of those things where you, you, you hope you had a couple extra hours in the day, but, uh, you know, you try to jam as much as you could in. For sure. So we love to do, especially with alumni, uh, sort of name association. We'll get, say the name of one of your former teammates and maybe just say either a couple of words or a sentence or a paragraph, just something about that player. So let's start off with um, uh, kind of the obvious one, Mike Riley. Mike's a leader, and, and Mike's one of those guys that uh, as a teammate uh, and as a friend you want to, you want to play with and, and you want to be around he leads by example on the field and now being a couple of years removed and watching you can still see it and you can you can see it with a different lens now um, but you can still see that leadership Mike's a Mike's a good person and uh, he, he's a great teammate that's awesome let's uh, let's look at a leader on the other side of the ball how about JC Sherritt? JC and I came into Edmonton in the same time 2011 I believe and JC is, uh, and we actually were roommates one year together and obviously got to know each other very well. Again, it, some of the very similar qualities to Mike. He's extremely tough. He's an incredible leader, but he leads by example. Again, uh, similar to Mike. And not an overly vocal player, but, um, you know, he, he's not afraid to speak up when he needs to. And uh, he's just one of those guys where you want to be around. You're, you gravitate to him, and teammates do for the right reasons. And and just to get his person off the field as he is a uh, player on the field. All right, let's look at someone who is a not only a fellow offensive lineman but uh, a fellow Vancouver Islander, Justin Sorensen. Yes, you know Justin came in uh, a couple of years after getting to before I or, sorry after I got to Edmonton and I, I got to spend some time with him and get to know him quite well. We had funny enough had never crossed paths previously, uh, even growing growing up about three hours apart up island. Justin is, is an incredible incredible leader in in a sense that he he leads by example like the others, but he's he's got this natural trait and, and you can tell when he walks into a room in, in a positive way. And, uh, you know, I, I enjoyed playing with him and, and similar to the, the other two guys, um, watching with a different set of lenses on now as a fan, he's, he's fun to watch. You can tell he enjoys a game of football and being around the guys, which uh, is, is an attribute that makes it easy to go to work with somebody uh, every day. All right, let's do one more. Uh, somebody that I think has been associated with the Eskimos longer than anybody ever, Dwayne Mandrusiak. Well, I, I was going to say, well, you, you're going to keep going down the list until you find someone I was going to say something bad about. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, Dwayne is, uh, in, in all this, the attributes and traits that I just described the, the three former teammates with, I'd use the exact same thing to describe Dwayne. He's a leader in the locker room. He's tough. I'll give him that. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, he's just a great friend. He, the role that he plays in that locker room, there's so many different hats, uh, whether, you know, running the equipment room and managing that, but also being a mentor to the to the players, uh, you know, being there to, to listen to good stories, to celebrate good, good things, but also to help guys get through tough times. And the way that he's played that role for as long as he's played that role is, is incredible and um, again uh, somebody that I, I I see being friends with you can tell teammates or or co-worker someone that you're going to know for a long time and you're going to be friends with for a long time and, and listen to these, some of the teammates that you have today fall into that obviously and, and Dwayne of course would too as well uh, incredible person uh, in and out of the office and uh, somebody that you want to be around with and and I enjoyed being around with and I enjoyed my time there Fantastic. That's awesome. that's awesome. Talk about making us more proud to be Eskimo fans. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
Um, so going back to game times, uh, did you have any pregame rituals, any foods you had to have, any superstitions? Yes, yeah, no, pregame uh, ritual superstitions. So when I first came in, came into the CFL, I was extremely superstitious. I drove in the same way the, on game day. I listened to the same music. I ate the same thing. And, and I think as I got older, you know, I, I relaxed a little bit on some of them. Um, <laughs> I, I like to think I did. Um, I, and I think having children helped that. Um, <laughs> and be just because it's, uh, the schedule can go sideways even on a game day. And, and it's something you get used to. I think that actually that helped a lot. And, uh, but other than, I'm trying to think the, the route into the game normally had to be the same, same way. And I, uh, I, I always got dressed the same way and at the same time, mm-hmm. and that carried right through to the end. I always had to have my my gear on at a certain time just to feel comfortable. I had that as much as a superstition as a, just trying to be one less thing to on the checklist as you're preparing for a game. So that was always one thing that I made sure I had uh, everything. And Dwayne used to actually uh, give us the years a little bit because we'd always race to the stadium and Stu would be there first on game day <laughs> and, uh, as, as we prepared early. We like to sit around with the offensive line and have, <clears throat> excuse me, have a meal or a lunch or a, a early dinner. And he would, uh, he would always say that we don't need to be there for four and a half, five hours before a game. <laughs> and we told him that was part of the being prepared. So <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> um, staying with your your playing days, was was there who was the kind of hardest D lineman that to play against? The list is long. Uh, there's, there's a lot of good defensive linemen that, that I, I played against. I mean, obviously, one I remember Cameron Wade playing in DC oh, plays. Yeah, when it got loud was was a handful playing a tackle, and then on the other on the other end it was Brent Johnson. So playing BC in that era um, as an offensive tackle was you always had your hands full. I, I remember earlier in my career and, and playing against a guy uh, like Scott Schultz in Saskatchewan mm-hmm. um, incredible player there isn't many defensive linemen that line up every day that aren't going to make you work work hard that day uh, and those are two that, that stick out in my mind but again that list would be a long list yeah yeah I can only I can only imagine let's switch gears for a second here now towards the PA side of things before we got you on here we were talking about some of the changes that the CFL has made with no padded practices and and the extra bye week next week and of course the extra bye week for us as as Eskimo fans this year we're exciting because that gives us more healing time that's be very nice but what do you see as some of kind of the advantages and disadvantages of starting the week earlier with that extra bye I think the, the the two major changes made last week were extremely complementary of each other. Uh, adding the additional bye week is, is in theory going to alleviate, I, I believe, the numbers up to two thirds of the short weeks, which is a good thing. Too many games in too short a time uh, is extremely taxing on the players. Yeah, and being able to have those those longer weeks to recuperate and and prepare for that next game is extremely important. I'll combine that with the reduction completely of the full contact practices. I, I think is really going to, it's going to make sure those longer weeks are a recuperation and rest. So I think together those are, uh, are going to be extremely uh, well received uh, and, and to allow the players to prepare properly in between games next year. Well, that's going to be just so important to us for sure. Obviously, we've got uh, the collective bargaining session coming up in the in the next little while. What are some of the initiatives that the Players Association is working on that you can tell us about? Well, we had, uh, we've been very open and, and public about uh, some of the player safety initiatives yeah. in the last 12, 15 months. And, and, you know, I think there's things as a game of football continues to evolve that we'll still look to address bargaining. Uh, collective agreement doesn't expire until May of 2019. So there, there is lots of time before for those discussions start, but I think, you know, the priority of player safety is always going to be there uh, right. between now and, and the bargaining session and beyond, quite frankly, there's, I, I think the player safety and, and, and evolving the game are things that, that don't have to, and they shouldn't have to wait to bargaining. Those are things that if we can identify and whether it's in season, like these changes were, uh, it, it doesn't matter the time if we're able to identify it and, and come up with a solution to, potential player safety and betterment of the game, then those are decisions that you should make right now. 
and uh, and having those decisions like last week midway through the season uh, I mean that's a positive thing that's a positive thing that the association and the league can have those discussions in season and, and, and be able to come up with those decisions in season yeah I mean I think having Randy Ambrosi as the commissioner someone who's not only been a player but also been on your side of the table with being secretary in the players association is only a good thing for the league the, the lines of communication with Commissioner Ambrosi uh, coming on were, um, you know, have definitely increased. And that's a positive. Um, the relationship between the association and the league, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that, um, that the two groups uh, agree on. And, and for the betterment of the players and for the betterment of the game, uh, there, there's always going to be the adversarial ones, and that's, that's all right. The important piece is to have the lines of communication strong and, and it's okay to disagree and as long as it's done in a respectful way and, and the communication doesn't cease and I think that's you know the road we're, we're down right now and that's a positive it's a positive for everybody and uh, you, you know as much as we can keep the increased communication and discussions going um, you know that'll uh, hopefully get us right into as bargaining talks start closer to the uh, 19th season Yeah, that's an awesome answer. So how does the Players Association balance representing both sides of two players that are involved in one incident? That's a great question. I think the processes we have in place, we we look at, uh, as an example, the whole play or or the whole scenario or incident uh, with that mindset, knowing that we are representing both sides in in every case, uh, speaking for the players. Um, So that that does play in into internal discussions, the structure we have, the communication from the executive to the player reps, into the locker rooms, the advisors, the team that we're building out and we have built out uh, are in place to be able to have those internal discussions uh, when we're faced with, you know, circumstances where potentially we're looking at two sides, both players. And uh, and those are discussions that we have quite regularly and internally and, and how best to represent both players and how best to represent the group of players collectively. That That's awesome. I, I, I actually want to ask you, is it is it different now with you being on the PA side when you are dealing with players that you played with? Because you're really not that far removed from having played. No, and that's, that's a great point. I think it's been extremely helpful with the transition to have those relationships and you know, obviously some closer than others when there's former teammates involved, um, but also with it being a small league and, you know, having played against, if I haven't played with, I've played against most uh, in, in the league and to have those relationships when we walk in to do our team visits or if there is an issue or there's a conversation that needs to be had, it has been extremely helpful. But I also, you know, I'm, I'm a believer too that being able to understand as, as best as I can in this role, being a former player and, and, and trying to put myself in that player's shoes, whatever the circumstances are, uh, I think is extremely helpful. And I think it's helped us, you know, grow as an association with those strong, again, coming back to communication and having that ability to communicate with the members. Uh, with that, our executive does an incredible job as well having those strong relationships and our player reps. Our player reps are that vehicle for the association that sits in, you know, the twice a year with the association meetings, regularly on phone calls, regular email communications, but they're also in the locker room every day. And, and to be able to have that commun- direct communication uh, where a player feels comfortable uh, speaking to a rep, executive member of the office, myself, and, and being able to have that strong communication on our side allows us to, again, have that communication with the league and with the clubs. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to, uh, we want to ask you to put your alumni hat on just one more time here. And um, we, we asked this of all of our alumni. Uh, what, what does the Eskimo way mean to you? Do it the right way, which I know means a lot of things, whether it's, <laughs> whether it's in training and practice, whether it's uh, off the field, in meetings, out in public, as an alumni. It's, and if you do it the right way, it's an extremely strong uh, group that you, you can stay part of for a long time. This is my first year uh, out to a game in Commonwealth since playing. Mm-hmm. And being able to get into the alumni 
lounge and, and see there and talk to the talk to everyone in their room and whether they're you know a few years removed like myself for 15 20 25 30 years removed there's just a collective unity and you can see that they still do it the right way and that's one of the first questions we talked about on the call tonight was come first coming and yeah to edmonton and and seeing the tradition and the history in the city and the stadium and, and the organization and it's just a sense of you know if you're if you're going to buy in you're going to be accepted and and in order to buy in and be accepted you have to do it the right way oh man that that is awesome goosebumps. awesome goosebumps. yeah goosebumps exactly um well brian we we can't thank you enough for joining us uh, this week on the show. Uh, I hope when you're in Edmonton next time, we can get you down into the turf district here and 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 share a beer and tell some more stories. But uh, where where can people uh, find you online and all those types of things? You know, I'm I'm starting to get a better social presence. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll admit, um, the learning learning experience for me, uh, most everything through the PA uh, Players Association. Uh, to reach me online or anything like that, uh, I, I I ventured out into uh, the world of Twitter. So, I, like I said, I'm starting to make uh, somewhat of a small footprint there, but uh, that, that's starting to grow as well. But I'm looking forward to getting out back out that way, and love to sit down with uh, with you guys to uh, talk some more football. Love oh, it. That's that. That is outstanding. Well, uh, with uh, some of and all these great player stories, uh, let's let's take a moment now and and go back to more stories of the past. As it's time for our Eskimo history segment. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of This Week in Eskimos History. Today we'll be looking at Eskimos milestones in the week of September 26th through October 2nd. Looking at some Eskimo-related birthdays this week, September 27th, Defensive back, linebacker, and 2015 Grey Cup champion Otha Foster, with the club from 2014 to 15, turns 29 years old. And on October 1st, running back and 2003 Grey Cup champion and Canadian Football Hall of Famer Mike Pringle, with the club briefly in 1992 and returned from 2003 to 04, celebrates a golden birthday turning 50 years old. And looking at some current Eskimos celebrating a birthday this week, September 26th, Danny O'Brien, quarterback in his first year with the club, will be 27. And on September 29th, Nate Bahar, receiver, 2017 draft pick, turns 23. Looking at some Eskimos who have an anniversary of passing, on September 28th, 1983, Frank Guts Anderson passes away at the age of 55. Frank Anderson was a two-way player with the Eskimos from 1952 to 1957, playing guard on the offensive line, but is most known as a five-time All-Star at end on the defensive line. Anderson was one of the first alumni of the University of Oklahoma Sooners to join the Green and Gold, and one of their best, earning the nickname Blood and Guts for his take-no-prisoners play on the field, later shortened to just Guts. Anderson played in the newly minted Eskimos 1952 Grey Cup three years after they were formed and was a key member of the 1954-1956 Eskimo Grey Cup winning dynasty. He was posthumously enshrined on the Eskimos' Wall of Honor in 1985. Looking at other important dates in the history of the Empire, we pick a couple of games versus Calgary. Going way back to October 1st, 1921. Edmonton scores the largest margin of victory in Canadian football, downing their rivals to the south by a score of 72-2. to Only once in the game did Calgary even gain positive yards, measuring six, as both lines for Edmonton dominated the contest. Calgary's only points came on a pair of rouges after kicks to the deadline were their only offense after being roundly stuffed, while the Eskimo touchdowns were scored by early Edmonton legends Curly Dorman with three before entering his leg in the second quarter. Jimmy Enright, Bill Rankin, followed by three consecutive majors by the legendary Vic Yancey and Miles Palmer scored one to end the third. The Eskimos finished off the scoring in the fourth with another major from Bill Rankin, and Jack Fraser became the third Eskimo to score a hat-trick of touchdowns. 
While the names may have been forgotten now to all who cheer for the modern incarnation of the Eskimos, this was the first Western team to compete for the Grey Cup at the Dominion Championship that year. The 13 touchdowns scored by one team remains a record for major scores in a game, as does the 70-point margin of victory. The Eskimos dominated all teams in the West in 1921, outscoring all teams by a combined score of 148 points to 5 over the three games played that season. And lastly, September 28, 1975. In front of a sold-out crowd at McMahon Stadium, Edmonton goes into halftime down 29-2 to versus the hometown Stampeders. Calgary halfback Willie Burden had a pair of majors in the first half and had more left in him, and the Edmonton faithful were understandably resigned to the fact that the game was already long out of reach. Edmonton defensive back and returner Mike Fink had other ideas, and returned the third quarter opening kickoff 81 yards down to the Calgary 6, which quarterback Bruce Lemmerman finished off with a strike to Stu Lang, 48 seconds into the second half. After missing out on the two-point convert, Edmonton's defense stopped the Stampeder offense, and the Esks started their second drive of the half as they worked down the field, and again Lemmerman capped off the drive with a touchdown, this time to John Konohowski, which moved the score to 29-15 after Dave Cutler kicked through the convert. Belief rippled through the Edmonton bench, and the Eskimos had a third touchdown drive late in the third with a 16-yard pass to Calvin Harrell, followed by a Cutler field goal to have the green and gold outscoring the red and white 23-0 in the third frame. (laughs) Calgary showed some signs of life as Willie Burden pushed through the line for his third touchdown, partway through the fourth to give the home team a 36-25 lead with 10 minutes left in the game. The kickoff after their score went to future Hall of Famer Larry Highbaugh, who weaved his way down the field, running 92 yards before being dropped at the Calgary 14-yard line, from which Calvin Harrell romped to score a second major of the evening, and quarterback Bruce Lemmerman rushed himself for the two-point convert, bringing the score to within three points with just over eight and a half minutes left. Dave Cutler's 171st career field goal, tying the CFL record set by former Stampeder Larry Robinson, knotted up the score at 36 points apiece with two minutes remaining in the game, and Calgary took the ball on their own 35. Two plays later, Calgary fumbled the ball on a third down gamble on their own 43-yard line, giving Edmonton possession as they drove down 33 yards to the Calgary 10 with 14 seconds remaining in the game. Dave Cutler lined up his historical 172nd career field goal, but missed wide on the field goal and history. However, the kick went through the end zone to soften the blow, giving the Eskimos an improbable 37-36 victory. Edmondson would go on to win the Grey Cup that November, their third attempt in as many years, and their first win in 19 years since the days of Parker, Kwong, Miles, and Bright. Thank you again for listening to another episode of This Week in Eskimos History. Please follow us on Twitter and Instagram at EsksHistory, or find us on Facebook under This Day in Esks History. Until next week... Fight on Eskimos. Thank you again, Superfan. As always, it was amazing. Let's get to our game recap. Oh, right. There isn't because we were on a bye. Luckily enough, we were able to catch up with some current Eskimos. Let's go to some interviews with both Danny Grew and Bryant Mitchell. Oh, right. There isn't because we were on a bye. Luckily enough, we were able to catch up with some current Eskimos. Let's go to some interviews with both Danny Grew and Bryant Mitchell. We are now joined by offensive lineman Danny Grew. Uh, welcome back to the Eskimo Empire podcast. Thank you very much. Uh, happy to be here. Absolutely. And uh, now you're just coming off a of bye week. How was the bye week for you? Did you get a chance to get away and get a chance to uh, kind of have a break and rest up? It was great. Yes, uh, I was with my girlfriend. So we stayed here, went to the mountains. We got some fresh air. It was, uh, <laughs> no, it was actually good for my body. Now I'm ready to go. It was good. Uh, we stayed at Hamilton a little bit as well. We just enjoyed enjoyed the, the week, and now we're ready to go. Awesome. I think you've been out to the mountains pretty much every bye week that you've had the chance. What is it? Do you really like it out there? Oh, if, if I could stay there, I would. Honestly, <laughs> I, I love it. it. For me, I told my girlfriend that 
I got two places that I love. It's either the ocean or the or the mountains. When I'm there, I just think about nothing, and uh, that, that's why I love to go to mountains. There's no ocean close, so <laughs> mountains are there, so that's why I love it. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, you got the beer. You can do the Grizzly Adams thing. Oh, <laughs> I, absolutely. Just give me a freaking uh, uh, cavern, and I'll be good. You know? <laughs> awesome. Now, you've kind of been on and off the injured list here the last little while. Is it that kind of where you look forward to those bye weeks, just kind of rest up the body, get back in? And, and be ready to get going again for the stretch drive. Yeah, actually, I, I was honestly I, my body was was banged up, and I needed uh, at least uh, I was not playing the last the past two two uh, two weeks, but I needed that for my body to get healthy again. Yeah. And I wanted to be as much as healthy as I could be to for the rest of the season because I know we had uh, we have big games and uh, we have a big goal. And if we want to attain it, we are, I needed to be healthy for to help my team. So that's what so that's why that week was good for me. Awesome, and, and we're excited to have you back because we need that nasty back on the line that you bring. That's yes. fantastic. Tell us a little bit about your experience since being drafted in Edmonton. It's been three years here. Uh, of course, your first year went rather well, but uh, what, what's been the full ex- um, experience for you here? So, yeah, just like you said, it a great cup. My first year was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, honestly, my, my, my second year, I, I actually broke my fingers. I was out the, m- the most part of the season, but yeah. I still enjoyed it the most. I learned. I like being around those guys, and honestly, just the city where it's real different from where I'm from, so it's something different, and I love it. I love it all. Love the fans, love the organization, and uh, since I'm here, I've been uh, welcome, open arms, and uh, I love it. Oh, that's that's fantastic. Now, do you have a couple spots in the city that you like to kind of hang out? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I like to hang out at the pint with the O-line. Nice. Uh, <laughs> we, we often go to Tres Carnales. It's our oh, little, yeah. uh, little uh, restaurant place on day three. And we, uh, when my girlfriend is here, we kind of go to uh, some board cafe. I oh, like, we like, nice. I, we like to play okay. games and uh, boards like that. And we always go to movies. So we love uh, hanging out in the city, just going to the, uh, on White Ave. I, I live on White Ave, so I love to go walk on White Ave and stuff like that. Oh, that's, that's yeah. very, very cool. I'm a board gamer myself. So yeah. do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite game you like playing these days? Uh, we bought, we bought, uh, we don't have a, we have a couple board games right now. We had uh, we bought a Game of Thrones uh, board game. Nice. We, we like this one. I have to like the old board games, like Clues and stuff like that. <laughs> but we usually now we play a uh, uh, Exploding Kittens. You know of that? course, yes, yeah, it's play, awesome. We play this yes. one because my we got two cats at home. My girlfriend <laughs> loves cats, so. I bought this game uh, for her, and uh, she loves it, and uh, we always play it together. We love it. That's, yeah. that's I have the not safe for work version. We'll have to yeah. play it one day. I'm yeah. sure it's, it'll be a blast. <laughs> now, let's just kind of get to know you a little better overall. So, um, do you have a favorite movie? Lord of the Rings. Ooh, yes. nice uh, pick. I'm a, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan. This weekend, I just went to the Comic Comic Expo, I think, yes. was in yeah. uh, Edmonton. Yeah, and I met Gimli, the actor who plays Gimli, John Rice uh, Davis. Yeah, and I got him signed up picture, and awesome. I was I was freaking out. I was so happy uh, <laughs> to meet Gimli. That was one of my favorite characters. So yeah, that's my favorite. Movie. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> I was just at the expo too. Did you see any anyone else, or meet anyone else, or go to any panels? We did uh, go to the cosplay, the, oh, the, yeah, the, the yeah, cosplay yeah. Comp- uh, competition. My girlfriend loves that. She would love to do cosplay one day. And, I, and I, I, I told her, hey, go ahead if, if you if you want to do it. We'll We'll do it. I, I don't care. I like it. And uh, she was. She, we didn't met them, but she saw the Stranger Stranger Things kids. Oh, she, nice! She, she, yeah, she wanted to see them so badly, and uh, we saw them. I was quite happy to see the guy who created uh, Captain America as well. Nice. One of the, uh, who did the comic book. Yes, we saw him too. And uh, no, just walking there. I love. I love those places. It's such a. You go back like uh, twenty years younger, and I love those those kind of things. You could totally be the mountain. Oh, uh, she, she, that's what she said. She said she said we could do a cosplay of you being the mountain, being a zombie. And I'm like, yeah, that could be. That could be good. <laughs> I I think I think you'd be pretty good as Groot. Yeah, yeah as well. Yeah, as well. I, I would. I would. I am Groot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, him too. That was amazing. Yeah, that was awesome. yeah. Oh, yeah. that's very, very cool. Okay, what do you? Uh, what's your favorite food? What do you like to eat? I like a lot. Of, there's a lot of things I like. I would say um, pizza. It's, it's a common <laughs> thing, but I mean, there's a pizza place in Quebec City. Me and my girlfriend always go. It's our special place. It's uh, Chic Alo. It's called like this. Oh. It's their homemade pizza. It's so good. I, I love pizza. Ooh, that sounds wonderful. When <laughs> yeah. I'm there next, I'll have to. Uh, oh, yeah, I'll have yeah, to check that out. Awesome. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite book? I read The Lord of the Rings, so I, I kind of love The Lord of the Rings, but I, I, I read a new book uh, not a long time ago. I read the, um, 
the biography of uh, Bill Romanowski. Oh, nice. An NFL linebacker. Yeah. He used to be an NFL linebacker, and his, his biography is incredible. And it's it's the stuff he says in it, it's, it's kind of... Uh, impressive and uh, you realize that it's a tough game and yeah. you went through it a lot and that's what's cool. Do you have a favorite NFL team, favorite player of all time from the NFL or CFL? Yeah. When I was young because I was from uh, I grew up in Sherbrooke close to Montreal I grew up watching uh, Cal Vio and all those. Nice. And stuff, so that's why I go in the CFL mm-hmm. and that that that's why, like, I, I was supporting the Owls, but I'm not supporting them anymore. <laughs> but uh, good choice. Yeah. Good choice. And yeah. uh, NFL. Um, when I was young, my favorite player was Brian Herlacher from the Bears, and nice. uh, and I, I liked uh, uh, Jake Long, O line from uh, Miami Dolphins. But my favorite team when I was young was Bears, Chicago Bears. Oh, awesome, awesome. Now, we always we ask a couple of questions. If you had an hour to talk to anyone, live, dead, or otherwise, who would it be and why? There's a lot of people I would love to talk to, talk to but uh, I would say um, I would love to talk to uh, Conor McGregor. To ask nice. Him what's up? To yeah. Him, uh, <laughs> uh, what's going on? Uh, there's a couple of person, uh, for sure, dead people as well. I mean, there's so many great people that live and uh, had an impact in our lives. That uh, a, pr- a, a, live, a living person would be Conor McGregor, yeah. and after that, I mean. I don't know. It could be a political person. It could be anything. I, I don't know. Right okay. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Now, you've been here for three years, so uh, I think you've had enough experience. What does the Eskimo way mean to you? For us, it's bone. You know, it's yeah. uh, the brotherhood of nasty Eskimos. It's yeah. been... I, I got I got coached at Laval by a guy named Mathieu Bartra. Yes. And he played here for nine years. And he told me everything about the Eskimos before I, I came here, and it's absolutely what he said. And it... And I understand what he means, and it's that's a family, that's being a family, that's being nasty on the field, that's being just like a great, like great people, but together playing together and intense, and that's what it is here. And, and the history of the team is is quite something I've never seen in my life, and that's what I love about the team. Oh, great, great answer, great answer. All right, now uh, we, before we let you go. You got to give us an "I am Gru" in English and in French. Okay, all right, all set. Okay, here we go. I am Gru. <laughs> nice. Je suis Gru. <laughs> <laughs> that is fantastic. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, man. Uh, and uh, we'll hopefully have you back on in the future. My pleasure. Thank you. We are now joined by one of our favorite receivers on the team, Mr. Bryant Mitchell. How are you doing, man? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, thanks for coming over to chat with us. Exactly. Give us a little bit uh, of, of kind of where you started as far as playing football and, and how you ended up here in Edmonton. Man, started in the street. <laughs> oh, is that right? Yeah, I started yeah. Uh, playing when I was a young kid, uh, just playing in the street with friends. Never mm-hmm. really thought it would go anywhere. I loved it, though, right? Uh, and then I started playing. Uh, in high school, you know, I played flag yeah. as, a, as a child, but I played high school at, at corner my freshman year. Ooh, wow! You know, I broke my wrist my junior. I didn't play sophomore year. Broke my wrist junior year. Played like the last few games, but my senior year was my first real year at receiver. Yeah. Then I went to junior college, Division One, and Division One AA, and now here. Yeah, and now here. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. What What was it like for you coming up? Not, not only you're coming to a completely different game in the yeah. CFL, but you're coming into a completely different country. So you've got culture shock and all those things. And I know you've been here for a number of years now, but what, what was the biggest change for you? Honestly, just the waggle. Yeah, you know, it's football. Football is football at the end of the day. Yeah, uh, I don't think it was much of a culture shock for me. You know, I went to school in Louisiana, okay. the Northwestern State of Louisiana. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't much of a culture shock. That was more of a culture shock to me yeah. than you know coming here. But other than that, I loved it. You know, it was a smooth transition. Awesome. And like I said, the football game has been football. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Now you've been you so you've been with the team three years right now. Yeah, yeah two, exa- and half, two and a half, but uh-huh. in that range. Yeah, exactly. And we're lucky enough to finally get to see uh, some action on the field here. What's what's kind of been the biggest difference or, or thing that you think you've grown over those three years that and now we're getting to see on the field? Patience, you know. Yes. Which I, I know a lot of people hear me say God's worked on my patience. You know, just seeing the game differently. Mm-hmm. You know, really maturing in the game, not so much just being. In the moment, you know, I yeah. I am in the moment now, just enjoying the moment and taking everything, every nugget that yeah. a teammate can give. I'm trying to take it and grow with it. The details, you know, the 
getting better is in the details, not yes. so much the big things, but the small details. Yes, absolutely. Well, and I know you've impressed the hell out of us for two, two at least two training camps anyway. We're like, come on, we got to see this dude. So that's a good thing. And you always got a smile on your face, oh, which always. is very, very nice for the rest of us. Let's talk a little bit more about you as a person so people get to know who you are. Do you have like a favorite spot that you like to hang out in Edmonton while you're here? That's a good question. Uh, not so much. Um, we kind of go anywhere. I like West Edmonton Mall. It's nice. A good place okay. To go. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but no, you know, Brandon and I, we just kind of hang out at the house. <laughs> you know, <laughs> do 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 what we can as far as football. Like you know, we talk, we play, play yeah. darts. We have a dartboard in oh, our house. Oh, okay, nice. So you know, that gets competitive. He, I, and Danny O'Brien. Oh wow. Okay. So. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. so, but other than that, no, not at all. Paninis. I like that place. It's oh, place okay. That's a good place. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, I can I can go with that. What is uh, what's your favorite kind of food? What do you like to eat? I'm a breakfast guy. So. Nice. I have to have breakfast. French toast is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, known a man, but you know, there's a place out here called Simply Done Cafe. Yes. Uh, Trayvon and I go most before most home games. Okay. Uh, van. Yeah. And so you know, that's. I mean, it's amazing to me. <laughs> yeah, that that's awesome. So, do you have any pregame rituals? Any foods you need? Any <laughs> superstitions? I'm not a superstitious guy, but there are some rituals that I have. I go to Panini's every third day. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and get this pasta, penny pasta with tomato sauce, chicken, green peppers, and tomatoes. Nice. Every every third day. So before we travel or before we play home, that's what I get. Nice. You know, nice. other than that, like I said, home game, simply done cafe, we ride over there and that's it. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not such a bad thing. No, no, well no. this can be on or off the record depending how you want to do it. Okay. But I know you and I share the same faith. And I just wonder how you balance that in a world that maybe not <laughs> so faithful how do you stay strong in your faith so uh i'm really connected you know when it comes to my church home um i got a lot of men that are really strong in their faith who you know i can call on whenever i'm struggling or you know i'm not feeling so faithful so that's definitely something that you know james and i talk about a lot you know uh james is strong as well so you know you keep people like that around you you know and you limit the times where you're in a world of unfaithfulness, right? Yeah. So I try not, like, I, I don't party, I don't smoke, I don't drink, you know, anything like that because I know what it leads to. Yeah, so absolutely. try to just, you know, stay as far away from what I feel like could hinder me or tempt me. So. That's awesome. Oh. Well, you're an inspiration to oh, me online on Twitter. I always look for your little retweets or tweets. Yeah, I've been like, off for a couple weeks. <laughs> no, that's good. That's cool. Everyone needs yeah. that, but yeah. So that, thank you for that. No, I appreciate it. Sometimes it. it really helps me. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I know how it gets. <laughs> <laughs> and now you're, but you're really strong in your family too. Yeah. I know, like during the bye week, you were back seeing family oh, and yeah. things like that. Like, how often do you get to see your family now that you're way up here? Oh man, so I every break I get, I try to go home. Yeah, you know, I don't really care how much it costs. I mean, I do, but you know, yeah, I, mean, I get I, what you mean. Yeah, I try to spend as much time with them. I got three little boys. Yeah, uh, you know. King, who's my oldest, he's six. Uh, his real name is Amari. I just call him King. Okay. <laughs> and then uh, my twins, I have two twins. They're two. Okay. Uh, Caleb and Cameron. So yeah. My three boys, and you know, I try to see them as much as I possibly can. You know, but any bye week, any four days, I'm most likely going home. Okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Well, that ma- that makes sense. I mean, I've I've got three myself, so oh, I know oh, exactly hey. what that's like. You're gonna be around, and <laughs> if, when you're around, then they know who you are, right? Yeah, so that uh, and it keeps you connected, definitely. right? Definitely. Absolutely. All right, let's go to some fun questions. Yeah. Do you have a favorite movie? Bad Boys Two. <laughs> Bad Boys. <laughs> wow. Know, I, you know, it's funny, but it's been one of my favorite movies from a young age. Oh, that's uh, I love it. That's I fantastic. Yeah. Favorite book? Right now. I'm reading this book called No Excuses by Brian Tracy. Okay. Right now, that has to be my favorite book. Right now. Yeah. All right. That's uh, that's <laughs> yeah, fair. That's definitely. fair. When you're hanging out at home, do you are you a gamer? Do you watch Netflix? Do you do anything like that? I'm not big on TV. I'm okay. Not, I'm not big on games anymore. Yeah. I and mean, once I start having kids, it's hard to start playing. <laughs> Tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, I love games. You know what I yeah. mean? I love I love Netflix. Uh, I was watching the Marvel Daredevil series and Defenders. And, yeah. Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, yeah. Iron Fist. So, uh, I'm big on superheroes, as everyone knows. Batman. Yeah. yeah. You know, I watch The Dark Knight. I try to watch that before games too. Ooh, that's uh, a good one. So yeah, yeah. yeah. I try yeah. to. I try to get that in whenever I can. But yeah. 
that's that's me. <laughs> oh, that's that's fantastic. Now we do ask everyone. Uh, so if you had an hour to talk to anybody, live or dead, who would it be and why? That's a tough question. Okay, so I'd have to go alive right now. It'd be Kobe. Yeah, it would be Kobe. Co- See, it's, it's three of them: Kobe, Terrell Owens, or Russell Westbrook would be the three that I'd really want to just have a sit down with, right? Yeah, but. I'd be, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm taking off three. That's I know, okay. I know that's, that's okay. a, a, out of side of the question, but I'm taking off. Three. I didn't say you couldn't have a panel. Maybe you could have a panel of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be okay with I'll that. Definitely take All right. Three. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, what does the Eskimo way mean to you, brotherhood? You know, I take the B out of bone. Uh, I just, don't get me wrong; it's not a separate entity or anything yep. like that, but brotherhood I, I take it and i think that this is a brotherhood i love being here i love the guys we have around i like the culture that they invite here you know yeah. and it's been the eskimo way truly you know since ed was here uh, yeah. you know he definitely made me feel at home and you know brock is the same way yeah oh that's <laughs> that's fantastic well we can't thank you enough we're hoping we get to see you more on the field as things are coming up and uh, so that we can cheer you on as we always do uh, but thank you for taking the time thank you for being part of the show and of course being a, a great Eskimo oh, thank you so much I really appreciate you guys thanks to both those guys for being a part of the show we very much appreciate it let's take a short break and be back with our out of town scoreboard and this week's pick 'em. Hey, this is Jed Roberts, and you're listening to the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Hey guys, do you know there's even more ways to interact with the Empire online? That's right, you can find us on Twitter at EskEmpirePod, on Facebook under the Eskimo Empire Podcast group, on Instagram at Esk Empire Pod, and you can also follow us on YouTube under our channel, the Eskimo Empire Podcast. Now, I know you guys like that Eskimo history segment, right? Yeah! You can follow more of that information at Esk's History on Twitter, and you can find it on This Day in Esk's History on Facebook. Don't forget to share, okay? Okay! Thanks so much for listening. Let's get back to the show. All right, let's get to our Empire Points update. Uh, Lord Touchdown has moved up into the first spot. Uh, Joe Balineski, Chris Curtis, Coach Vic, Joe Pritchard, Uncle BD, Leanne, Bill K, Shelly R, and Hippie are all in the top 10 right now. That's awesome. Good for them. Don't forget, of course, every Empire Point can be gained by uh, sharing the podcast on our various social media networks uh, or leaving an iTunes review or generally just making us laugh always gets a few extra points. Yeah. 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 <laughs> exactly. Top 10 in a draw for the choice of a game-worn Shamad Chambers jersey or a signed a Darius Bowman jersey. Absolutely, and lots of ways to get those points, and we will do that draw after I get back from the Grey Cup. Very exciting. How exciting. All right. Now, uh, Joe corrected me last week. Uh, I guess the uh, Darius for Autism watch uh, that he is doing is now up to $82.70 because he is counting yards from both Darius and Bryant Mitchell. Oh, so, woohoo! Uh, so he is up there now. So we will keep track of that as it goes forward. And uh, thanks again, as always, for keeping me on my toes there. Joe. Absolutely. I yeah. saw that uh, Mark Tressman made a donation to the Darius for Autism Fund. That was awesome. Absolutely fantastic. I love to see that the CFL players and coaches all supporting each other regardless of, of the affiliation. And That's one fantastic. day we'll have him in here to talk about that. Sure, let's talk You're about it. You're always welcome, Adarius. Okay, uh, let's go to our out-of-town scoreboard, which of course is brought to you by SeatGiant.ca. Need tickets for a concert, an event, or any of the CFL games across this great country? Head to SeatGiant.ca, where you'll find tickets for anything, and it's all in Canadian dollars. Now, Superfan, would we make our loyal listeners pay full price for those tickets? Heck no, that would be bull... Absolutely. Uh, find your tickets that you wanted. Use the code Fire Trucker, and uh, that'll give you a discount. Uh, definitely helps out the show. And all you do is get the tickets for the event you were already looking for. Easy squeezy. Uh, let's go over the games from last week. There's super fan as we don't have any of our own. It's all the rest of the league. So much easier to watch these ones, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Not surprisingly, in this one, the uh, third string quarterback in Ottawa couldn't quite overcome the first stringers in Winnipeg. Winnipeg taking this one handily. 29 to 9. Yeah. You know, the biggest thing that I want to talk about in this game, 
can we please have more Miller Dunnigan doing the oh, call? Absolutely. I love me some Gord Miller. And of course, Dunnigan, get on your horse. <laughs> oh, it was, I just love, I love those two together. Um, in the game, uh, Darvin Adams, man, he is turned into one of the elite receivers in the yeah. CFL. Not a bad game for him whatsoever. Almost 200 yards. Yeah. And just some beautiful catches. Absolutely. Beautiful catches. Uh, and of course, uh, I, I do want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, Mo Leggett. He is putting up defensive MB- MVP type of numbers right yeah, now. Yeah, I mean, coming out of the West, it's going to be him or Singleton, I think, for sure, from Calgary. Uh, he's having another great season as well. But yes. yeah, Mo Leggett had some great, great plays. Yeah, and turnovers, and he just yeah. seems to be everywhere around the ball. So uh, congrats to uh, Winnipeg, I guess. Yeah, exactly. So I- they game managed 29 points. <laughs> they managed to get some good points there. <laughs> they really managed to do well. <laughs> the next game, uh, for those of us that stayed up for it, uh, the uh, Hamilton Tiger got surprising many taking on the BC Lions and winning 24-23. Yeah, thank you, Hamilton. That sure. was kind of nice. Keep BC back a little bit of us there. Um, <laughs> did you guys read the Castillo story where he had yes. missed the two field goals in the first half? Yep. And at halftime, he goes and calls his girlfriend and then comes through clutch and what a huge kick at the end of that game. Absolutely. She is the real hero of this yeah. game. Absolutely. Tell you. Absolutely. Somebody at the Tiger Cats office is saying, can we just sign her and take her to all the games? Cause, well, man. after missing those and had coming on nearly a 50 yard field goal attempt at the end, I don't know how many people are thinking, well, here we go again. He hasn't made the other two. So yeah. And hammered it. Yep. The power of a woman. That's right. <laughs> So true. So true. Um, one other thing I just want to say with uh, the Tiger Cats, though, uh, Alex Green makes his debut at running wow. back. And man, did he have it. He looked amazing. Green machine. Oh, I like th- that. Sounds a little too Saskatchewan for me. Well, I hear you. Yeah. I think that um, I was I reading that Josh wants to call him greased. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That's where they're going to work. <laughs> I don't know. It's not catching on so far. Not Sorry, so Josh. Much. Yeah. But uh, man, yeah, he looked he looked pretty good. Yeah, he did. And I think part of it, too, is uh, there's a lot of talent on that BC team. I think that it's just a lot in their heads right now, especially Jennings. He's He seems like he's a bit snake bit. Well, they can't seem to finish in the red no. zone either, right? Yeah. Like, it's, so it's, sounds familiar. Sound, yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> that sounds so ironically familiar. <clears throat> Not anymore. Not anymore. We're going to finish this strong. That's right. Uh, then, of course, uh, the uh, third game this week, we had Toronto-Montreal. Toronto taking this one uh, by a couple of touchdowns, 33-19. Which uh, really flatters Montreal, as far as I'm concerned. Yep. But uh, Wilder Jr. Ooh. Sets a toronto Argonaut record for uh, most yards in a two-game consecutive game series. So. That, uh, yeah, he is on fire. And um, now the interesting thing to me, Montreal scored more than Ottawa. Yes. Isn't that crazy? Didn't really see that coming. Anyway, last game. And last game, the Sunday afternoon game. We had a uh, defensive battle there with uh, Calgary coming out on top at the last moment, winning 15-9. to nine. Yeah, no TDs for Calgary in this game, which was a little bizarre. Um, uh-huh. but, uh, <laughs> but, but two amazing defenses. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I think there were certainly some good plays there, especially... Brandon Bridge coming in for uh, Kevin Glenn. I thought he really seemed to light a spark under that uh, Saskatchewan offense there, but uh, too little, too late. Absolutely. Yeah. And also, because it's Saskatchewan and Calgary, who cares? Let's and go right? to the... I was, I was hoping there was a way they could both lose. <laughs> lose, but, uh, lose. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much, yeah. All right, the uh, Esks are back at home this week to face the Blue Bombers. Game is at 7.30 on the brick field at Commonwealth Stadium. Uh, so the PowerWorks Electric tailgate should should be open around five bells. That is the plan. Yep. Uh, let's talk about this game a little bit. Uh, what are the keys to the game for the Eskimos to get back in the win column? Uh, let's start with you, Kayla. Oh, my gosh. Finish in the red zone, for the love of goodness. Nice. God, golly, Molly, who cares? <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> That's not a bad uh, not a bad key to the and game. And tackle. Oh, there's a new one. Tackling is good. Oh. I'm good with that. Super fan. Uh, keep your mouth shut if you're on the field. Uh, at this point, even we, if you're on the sideline, yeah. if you're on the yeah. sidelines, so, yeah. don't throw any piece of equipment yeah. down and break it. Uh, just 
we need some sort of discipline in this team. We can't get penalties. It's not even that we had a lot of penalties last game. It's just they came at the worst possible time. Yes. We need a lot more discipline in that team. And as Kayla said, just finish in that red zone. And I think it'll just, doesn't matter what happens to the referees at that point. We can take care of our own. They need like a little rant tent on field so they can like go in and throw <laughs> a hissy of fit. Silence. Yeah. And then come back out and then finish the job. You know, in my in my son's class, they have uh, what they call the uh, the Oscar chair. And they can go sit can in the uh, the Oscar chair, which is <laughs> then it, it it is surrounded by cardboard so that they are all kind of in and when they are having those types of moments, it is good to go sit in the Oscar chair so that you don't feel like you need to snap on your classmates. Let's invent the hissy hut. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't mind this. I think we got to TM that sucker right away. I think yeah. so. Yeah, we better get right on tent that. out there. Hashtag hissy hut. Yes, and, please. Uh, we're happy to be uh, part of the coaching team. Um, I think the key to this game, honestly, is to protect the ball. Winnipeg, what they've done very, very well, which a lot of us at the beginning of the season has said couldn't continue, uh, which of course we are now eating crow. Uh, they did, uh, they did continue to take the ball away more than they gave the ball up. Yeah. And I think if we can find a way to at least keep that turnover battle even, it helps us immensely in this game because Winnipeg is very good at capitalizing on those opportunities, but if they don't have the opportunities, it does make it a little more of an even game. So yes. protect the ball, protect the ball, protect the ball. And uh, as you know, because it wouldn't be right if I didn't say it, let's get a return that gets us up to at least the 40. Oh boy. Well, I think that Trayvon Van did very well in returns mm-hmm. last game, especially right. for that first game back. Mm-hmm. So I'd love to see him extend on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And call the headshots. Why not? Well, let's see. Let's hope for that. <laughs> let's hope there isn't one to call. <laughs> that, oh, True, be even that's better. better. Yeah. I like Thank that. You. Yeah. Uh, all right, super fan, who are you going to be watching in this game? Welcome back to the team, Mr. Aaron Grimes. <laughs> yes. A.A. Ron, where are you? Where is A.A. Ron right now? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, I mean,. We've seen a lot of struggles, especially with the injuries in that defensive backfield. It's going to be great to see someone of his caliber back there. Absolutely. Kayla, who are you watching? I'm going to watch for my guy, hopefully on the field, Brian Mitchell. Let's have a return. <laughs> all right. I, I can't say I blame you at all. Who would? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, I am going to be watching our defensive line this game. I think they're going up against one of the, if not the best, offensive line in the league right now. And one of the best ways to uh, kind of get towards having a win is to get Matt Nichols off his game. So Please. Euclid Cummings, Amondo Sewell. Hopefully, John Chick now coming back with a bigger game. Uh, Kwaku, of course, and Odell. Uh, it is time to get after that quarterback and uh, make sure that you're getting on top of it. Uh, Andrew Harris is a known Eskimo killer. Uh, let's throw them both off their game by putting some pressure in that backfield. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm like down with that. that. Wonderful. All right, let's get to our pick em for all of the games this week. Uh, of course, you can join the group uh, with the link that we regularly post. Uh, leaders this week are Hugo Agogo, C. Vincent up into second, T. Lee into third, TXA2002 in fourth, and Thomas Pine is back up into fifth. We're getting about the same as always there, super fan. Actually, I think, I, think I moved into 16 the top, and 18. top 10 or something at one point, but I don't know where I am now. So. No, no, I, I saw 16 and 18, so that's, oh, that's kind of, we're, we're, we're staying consistent. Uh, and as, uh, if you haven't seen it already, go back and check out the Periscope as we showed uh, some swag that we got from the CFL that will be part of the prize for the winner in this year's Pick'em. So we'll make sure that we get that out to you. A really, really cool kind of hoodie t-shirt with the Eskimos on it. So our first game this week saskatchewan versus ottawa it's in ottawa super fan you're up first oh i think until we start seeing uh, uh, trevor harris come back uh, it's going to be tougher to pick ottawa right now again that whole east versus west has been just so lopsided and uh, uh, you got to know that chris jones has got those boys really ticked off after the loss this uh, this last week so it's going to be uh, green riders all right kayla Unfortunately, I would have to agree. Yeah, I have to pick the Riders again this week. Oh. Yeah, I, w- I would actually say that there's probably some people who are licking their lips in the fantasy department with this particular game. I'm yeah. going to say that uh, Saskatchewan does find a way to pull that one out, as they say. Pull and pray. With that defense. 
a defense they're is playing starting amazingly their stride, well. So yeah, against against likely a, a third, maybe second string quarterback, depending on where that ends up. Yeah. Uh, I don't see Trevor Harris coming back this week, Not so yet. that's that's going to be a, a bit of a rough go there. Montreal is the next game versus Calgary, and it's in Calgary. Should we all just say it at the same time? Yeah. <gasps> Stampeders. Yeah. All right, fine. Next one, uh, Toronto versus Hamilton in the hammer. Uh, that's going to be up to me to pick first, and I am going to go with the Argonauts in this game. I believe that they will uh, continue playing as well as they have the last couple of weeks. Uh, I, I feel that Wilder is going to still keep going, and uh, there's a, a big opportunity again for uh, Green to start putting up some yards if they can keep Ricky Ray on his feet. So I'm going to go with the Argos this week in Hamilton. Uh, I'm actually going to take Hamilton in this one. I think June Jones has really turned that team around. They are believing in themselves, especially after that win in BC. And, uh, you know, with Wilder, they got a couple of games with the tape on him. They hopefully for them are going to figure out a way to maybe stop him and, and force them to do it through the air. Unfortunately for them, it's Ricky Ray, who's a future Hall of Famer. Uh, but, uh, no, I think Hamilton takes this one in a bit of a surprise. All right. Come I on. would have to agree with Mike. I was going to say the same thing about them believing in themselves. Now having that win away mm-hmm. was a big one, especially in BC. Um, but at home with their fans, and their fans are getting pretty pumped right now. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to have to say. Hamilton. Hamilton. Yeah. Hashtag Hamilton proud. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Lovely. Dwarp. <laughs> Dwarp. Yeah, exactly. And then, of course, the late game on Saturday, Winnipeg versus the Edmonton Eskimos here at Commonwealth Stadium. Super fan, who do you got in this one? Uh, I'm actually going with the Eskimos in this one. We've had a couple of weeks off. We're seeing some people coming back. Uh, I just have a really good feeling about this particular game. It's at home, which is going to help. We uh, To win the season series, we need to win by more than eight. And uh, I think we do it. All right. Kayla. Last time I had faith that we were going to beat Toronto and we did not. But this is do or die time. Mm-hmm. You can't lose this one. You just, you can't. If you lose this one, you're pretty much kissing the West goodbye because they, the other teams are too tight. BC may be on the rocker, but they're a swing. Right. And if we keep swinging down, it's going to be a very hard climb up. And I don't know if we can do it, but with our old retros coming back, <laughs> Walker, Grimes, I think it's going to rejuvenate this team. And I think we really need that. And we need this win. It's at home. Please, God. If you can hear us, help these boys, because apparently they're not helping themselves. But go with the Eskimos. Our Hashtag right. Duchess of Positivity. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, I am uh, I'm going to be the opposite this week. I am going to go with the Blue Bombers. Uh, the last couple of weeks that I have watched them play, they they're firing on all cylinders and they have very little in the way of injuries to worry about. So that consistency is really starting to show with this team. Fie on you. I know. Uh, lovely. I know, uh, Weston Drastler is going to be likely out, but I believe that they are just, and of course, Westerman on the defensive side, but they are just connecting on everything right now. And I, Andrew Harris against the Eskimos has just never been a good combination. So um, I think it'll be close, but, and I want to be wrong, but I'm going to pick the Blue Bombers this week. All right. Let's see how it goes. All right, let's move on to our fantasy, shall we? And uh, in that league, uh, the leader is still N. Hodge. Uh, Empire Andrew coming up in second, and Archley is back into third. And we've got a couple of people who are right behind there in fourth and fifth. So you can join us in the Eskimo Empire Pod League or the Canadian Football Pod Network uh, against all of your favorite podcasters. Uh, Kayla, do you have a fantasy player pick for this week? Is it too, too obvious to pick Wilder? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> not at all. No, not at all. I would say that that's not a bad pick. Yeah, that's the only one that's really jumping out. I wonder why. I wonder. Yeah, He's exactly. going up in value, I'm sure. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Roy Finch in this one. Oh. Uh, Calgary versus Montreal. I think Montreal's be punting the ball a lot. <laughs> Quite likely. Give him a lot, uh, a lot to work with there. So he could get you a lot of points. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I am going to go because I just said it. Uh, I think you pick Andrew Harris. 
this week. Uh, we've had a hard time stopping the run, and uh, he is a dual threat. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, Andrew Harris in this one. So we know who to put Aaron Grimes against. <laughs> yeah, well, I, whatever. Does it, does it get young off the field? I'm quite happy. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. whatever that, yeah, Ladler on uh, on that. That's fine. That's fine. On Harris? No. All right. We'll <laughs> All right. Well, we've reached the end once again. Uh, thank you, gang, as always, for uh, being a part of this. Uh, tell everyone where they find you on the interwebs. At Duchess Lombardi what? for Twitter and Eskimo Empire Podcast on Instagram. Wonderful. You can find me at 56 Parkies and the history segment at Esk's History. Perfect. And you can find me at Esk Empire Pod and at Free Palicious. Thank you again to Brian Ramsey for joining us on the show. And of course, to both Danny Grew and Bryant Mitchell. Make sure you can follow those guys on Twitter. It's at Danny G, D A N N Y G E E O 1. And of course, Bryant Mitchell at underscore B Mitch 16. So follow them there. And uh, make sure you find us on all of our social channels uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And of course, our Patreon page uh, shouts out to all of our Hall of Famers. You can join in at p a t r e o n patreon dot com slash esk empire pod. And uh, of course, help the show there where you can. Uh, the show is back next week, and it will be back on its regular Monday night. And we will be joined by the one and only Terry Jones. Uh, so we're we're kind of building up in the pods to the pod sweeps week that will be kind of third week in october all right well will the week off give the guys time to get refocused absolutely Absolutely. are we excited to see the return of grimes to this defense absolutely Absolutely. and is it time we as esks fans leave a game happy again (laughs) absolutely (laughs) for webmistress kayla and superfan mike i'm andrew remember you can't catch footballs with your face and we will absolutely talk to you next week Thanks for listening. Find more great shows like this at ZF Pod Network on Twitter.